Tonight's feat. Hi, this is Randy Stone. I cover the night beat for the Chicago Star. Stories start many different ways. This one started, strangely enough, with the flame of a match, whose feeble glow lit up a lightened face in the darkness, a frightened face twisted by an agonizing fear of death. <laughs> Night Beat, starring Frank Lovejoy as Randy Stone. The night is a thief, some poet once wrote, that steals the colors from the day. It's kind of pretty if you like words, but for my doll, they're not exactly true. Because there are colors at night. The burning red of passion, the angry green of jealousy and the ugly, terrifying black of fear. This was one of those nights when pickings were slim. I'd cover the town from Henrici's Bar in the Mart, out to Hyler's on the North Shore, and back downtown again with nothing to show for it. I was taking a shortcut through Lincoln Park to pick up my car. At that time of night, the park was pretty deserted, except for this girl walking up ahead of me, Not a bad silhouette, I might add, against the distant light. We were about halfway through the park when suddenly she stopped and threw herself onto a bench at the side of a path. There was something almost desperate about the way she did it. I ran up to her. Mm. Excuse me, are you all right? Yes, I'm all right. Well, I thought maybe you were sick or something. I told you I'm all right. Now, you please let me alone. Oh, now, look, lady, it's not what you think. I, uh... Well, this park, at this time of night, it's no place for a girl to sit around by herself. I don't need any help, just... Go away. Oh, sure, sure. I'll get lost. I can see you're all right. Only you don't mind if I just sit here and smoke a cigarette before I go. It's a public park. I don't care what you do. Thank you. You care for a cigarette? No. Of course, in order to really enjoy a smoke, you've got to have a match first. <laughs> I said in order to enjoy a smoke, you've got I to... heard you. Here. Thank you. Here. Keep the book. No, no, you better hang on to these. I won't need them. Well, you might need them later tonight. After tonight, I won't need anything. Oh, now, wait a minute. That's no way to talk. The only time you're not going to need anything, sister, is after you're dead. Why did you say that? What? That about being dead. For no reason. Why? Because after tonight, I will be. The girl jumped up and started running. Here was a kid that was afraid, afraid of death or afraid of life. But then, isn't everybody? I turned the matchbook over and looked at the ad on the cover. Penguin Club. A little all-night jump and jive place over on Clark Street. That's one I've been missing lately. On a hunch, I ambled up North Avenue in that general direction, turned up Clark a ways, and there it was. It was good to get inside out of that wind. Check your hat and coat, mister. No, thanks. I'm just looking around. Can I get your table? It's almost the end of the floor show. Sure. Well, anywhere in the back will be all right. Okay. The hat check girl, hostess or whatever she was, walked me through the bar to the edge of the main room. And then I stopped and really did a take. Out in the middle of the dance floor, under a little baby spot, singing in front of a five-piece band, was Little Miss Desperate from the park. Nice voice, don't you think? Yeah, yeah. Who is she? Why, oh, that's Franny. Fran Fowler. Haven't you been in here before? Not for quite a few months. Of course, she hadn't got much experience yet. From out of town, hmm? Someplace over in Wisconsin. Not bad looking, huh? Mm. In everything. Hey, what's wrong with her? Gee, I don't know. I can't. Well, how do you like that? Come on, folks. Come on. Let's give the little girl a great big hand. Nothing like a real sad song to light up a real sad act. Especially for a real sad tomato. Like tomato. <laughs> Guys and girls, get out of here. 
are you, Peggy? You got some a live one, huh? Oh, Tommy. <laughs> and you tell me Mason, ain't he the one? Yes, yes, he's quite the one, all right. Gee, hey, Tommy, you, you sure covered up for Franny, all right. Never let down. Keep him going all the time. That's show business. You know how it is, mister. Oh, yes, yes, I've heard. The show must go on. It's a new thing. Yeah, right? you gotta keep him <laughs> laughing. <laughs> I look for the this way all the time. What a joker. Now, uh, look, about that girl. Franny? Yeah, Franny. What seems to be the trouble? Well, that's hard to say, pal. Maybe she just found out she ain't no dinosaur. And she sure ain't. <laughs> Tommy, you killed me. Uh, seriously, fella. <laughs> Fella, why would a girl break up that way in the middle of a number and start to cry? Ah, uh, could be she got a cinder in her eyes. But just to make sure, I'll go ask her. See you later, Tommy. Come on, Sally. How's about buying a girl a drink? Oh, sure, sure, in a minute. Um, about this Franny. Look, do we have to talk about her? I, I thought you came in here for some fun. Maybe I get my fun wondering about people. What time's the next floor show? Next one's at two, then four. Well, they're not kidding about this all night business. And still another one at daylight. She's singing all of them? How should I know? She missed most of the 12 o'clock show. Just got here for that last number. Any idea where she lives? The Roman house around on Erie Street. Know the number? 391... You know, you ask an awful lot of questions. <laughs> well, that's my business. I'm a reporter, Randy Stone. I might have known it. Look, you're, you're not going to bother her tonight, are you? Of all nights? Tonight? This is the night that Charlie Dane is being executed down at Joliet. What's that got to do with her? Well, how would you feel? Look, Mr. Stone, she's human. This is the night her boyfriend's going to die. <laughs> I went up to the front of the bar to a phone booth and called the paper. There was something about this in the back of my mind somewhere, something I ought to remember but couldn't. I had the girl on the board put me through to Gabby in the library. Library? Oh, hello, Gabby. This is Randy. Yeah, Randy? Uh, what have you got on the Charlie Dana case? Still a little early, Randy. Execution's not set until 1.30. No, no, I mean old stuff. Good. Anything on a girl named Fran Fowler? Yeah, let's see. Charlie Dana, small-time gambler, killed a guy named Tonelli. Oh, yes, yes. I remember that. A gambling beef. Execution originally set for November, but he got a couple of months to stay. Oh, here she is, Fran Fowler. Singer in a nightclub was supposed to be his alibi, but the DA blew her up in the witness stand. She admitted she wasn't positive, but when she'd been out with the guy... Oh, yeah, yeah, that was it. I knew it was something. Anything more? Oh, details, Randy, details. Okay, Gabby, thanks. I'll catch up with you. Oh, Mason. Excuse me, were you waiting to use the phone? Uh, no, I was uh, waiting to talk to you. Why, certainly, but this time, no jokes, if you don't mind. I'm expecting a headache. <laughs> You're not funny, Stone. Who are you talking to? Well, isn't that uh, kind of my business? Uh, Peggy says you're a reporter. Yes, of a sort. You were asking about Fran, where she lived? That's right. You've got to let her alone, see? you printed enough about her. Uh, just a minute, Mason. Those are my lapels that you're hanging on to. Peggy shouldn't have given you Fran's address. I don't want you bothering her. I said let go of my lapels, funny man, or something's liable to explode in your face. <laughs> now, you stay out of my way or I'll ruffle that shiny hair. Where are you going? See about a cinder in a lady's eye. You're not going to see her. I won't let you. Can't you see this whole thing's driving her crazy? Tommy, believe me, I'm not interested in harming her or anyone. I'm just a guy trying to do a job. Now, if you'll step out of my way... You're please. not going there. I won't let you. I won't let Tommy, you. Tommy, you ask let for him. Him. My, my, that's a real nervous fellow. Now that he'd made such an issue out of it, going around to see Fran follow is a definite must on my schedule. I picked up my car and drove over to Erie Street. 391 wasn't much different from any of the rest of the rooming houses on the block. I got the number of her room from the mailbox and started down the dingy corridor to room 8. I knocked at the door, but there was no answer. I knocked again, and then I smelled gas. Hey, anyone in there? Miss Paula! Fran! I put my shoulder to the door, and the flimsy lock snapped open. I rushed into the gas filled room, holding my breath until I could smash open the window and let in some air. And then I saw Fran Fowler, the girl from the park, lying across the bed. And on the table beside her, one of those two burner gas stoves with both jets wide open. I turned them off and started shaking the girl. Miss Fowler, Franny, come on, get up. You gotta get out of here. Fuck am I gonna have to carry you? Put me down. You little fool, this room is filled with gas. Smell my purse. Where? On the table. <laughs> Okay, I've got it. Oh, 
fine thing with a gun in it. Give that to me. Outside, baby, outside. It was six seconds flat when we hit the sidewalk in the fresh air. I put Fran in the front seat of my car and then ran around and climbed in behind the wheel. I headed out to Sheridan Road along the lake. The cool, clean air felt good in my lungs and I could see Fran drinking it in, realizing now how close she'd been. I didn't make her talk until we were a long way out of town. And I pulled over to the beach side of the road and killed my motor. We, uh, seem to keep bumping into each other in the strangest places tonight. I... I guess I should say thanks. No, no, not at all. I'm the one who should say thanks. I still haven't returned your matches. Please don't make fun of me. No, I'm not. You see, I know now who you are. Charlie Danny's girl. Why don't you say it? In my book, you're just a kid on that in the park. What time is it? It's quarter to two. Then... Yes, it's probably all over by now. Like me to turn on the radio and... No. No, I, I don't want to hear about it. You must love him an awful lot. Love him? I despise him. Just... But still you were willing to alibi for him on a murder charge? I wasn't. I, I told him I wasn't sure of the time I was out with him, but he made me say it was the exact hour when the man was killed. Didn't you realize you might have been perjuring yourself? I didn't lie. I just didn't remember. It might have been like he said. When you're not sure, what else can you do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How'd you happen to get mixed up with him? I I didn't know anybody when I first came here. I was lonesome. And he was nice to you. He was. A lot more decent than most of the men who want to take you out when you're working in a club. And why do you hate him now? I didn't know what he did. A lot of people gamble. I didn't think too much about it. Then we got to going out evenings between shows at the club on my nights off. And the killing happened when you and he were supposed to have been out someplace together? That's what he said. He wasn't arrested until a few weeks after the... the trouble. I couldn't remember if I'd been with him during that particular time or not. Well, it's all over now. You did what you had to. That's about all any of us can do. But you've got to forget about it. Put it out of your mind. There's nothing more to worry about. Oh, that's just it. You don't understand. There is. What are you talking about? He promised. He promised, and I know he'll keep his promise. Promised what? I... I want to see him in prison. In the death house? I had to. I wanted him to understand, but he said I tricked him. What, by telling the truth on the witness stand? He said I double-crossed him. But now he, he didn't care. Why would he say that? He said he didn't care because... the night he died... I would die. And I'm afraid... <laughs> You are listening to Night Beat, starring Frank Lovejoy as Brandy Stone. This was real. This was no act. The sound she made would tear you to pieces, like some pitifully frightened animal who'd lost everything in the world. I let her cry it out. After all those months of strain, she'd have to get it out of her system. He said... The night he died, I died. Sure, sure. So you were scared. Who wouldn't be? But don't you see? That's just a cruel boast made by a cheap hoodlum who's trying to hurt you, make you feel responsible for his own plight. But he meant it. I know he did. Well, maybe he did at the time, but you've got nothing to worry about now. You had nothing to do with it. He paid for his own crime. Now he's dead, and you're still alive. He'll keep his promise. How can he? He's dead. I, I, I know you think I'm crazy. No, 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 no. But has anyone really tried to harm you? Oh, but this... This wasn't the night he was supposed to... Yes, I know. The execution was originally set for November. It was that night in November. I I hadn't been afraid before. I I thought it was like you said, because it was bitter. But all that day, I was upset. I I I told him at the club I couldn't work. And late in the afternoon, I got a note from Peggy saying, why didn't I go out to her cabin at the dunes for a couple of days? Nobody would bother me, no reporters, and I, I could get a good rest. So I, I drove out there that evening. It was quiet. Nothing around. Just empty sand dunes and her cabin all alone on the edge of the lake. I, I, I called Peggy at the club to let her know I got in all right. Oh, hello, Fran. Where are you calling from? Why, from your place. My apartment? No, 
Oh, your cabin. At the dunes? I wish all of you, Peggy, to let me come out here. Well, of course, Franny. You're, you're welcome to use the place, but I, I don't quite know what you mean. Well, your note this afternoon telling me to come out here. I didn't write you any notes. Oh, come on, Peggy. You did. You even told me where the key would be under the flower pot. Kid, that's where we always keep it. Everybody knows that. Peggy, I... I... Now, don't worry about it, kid. One of the girls probably sent you the note and just hasn't had a chance to tell me about it yet. I should have thought of it myself in the first place. No, no, wait, Peggy. I'm scared. What in the world else? You remember what I told you about what... what Charlie said the last time I saw him? It was about tonight that he said... when he died... Cut it, Franny. Now, cut it before you drive yourself back. Peggy, I'm all alone and I'm scared. I don't know what to do. Franny, you, you've got to hang up right away. You shouldn't be out there all alone tonight. Get in your car and come back to town as fast as you can. I'll, I'll wait for you here. All right, Peggy. All right. I hung up the phone and ran out of the house to my car. I turned on the ignition key and stepped on the starter. It wouldn't start. My car wouldn't start. I looked at the gas gauge empty. Somebody had drained the gas out of my car. I got out in a panic and started toward the highway. But there was a car out there, parked behind the big sand dune. I turned and ran back to the house. It was like some crazy, frightening nightmare. I didn't know what I was doing, but somehow I managed to get inside and lock the door. And then suddenly I was at the telephone. Operator? Operator, answer me. Operator, you've got to answer. I want the police. Operator, please help me. Someone. Operator! It was no use. The line was dead. While I was outside, someone had pulled the wires away from the wall. Crawled over to the window. Looked out to the highway. There was a car out there. Its lights were on. But as I looked, they went out. And now, I was alone. In the dark. With him, out there. I I must have passed out. When I came to, it was morning and, and... Peggy was there. She and Tommy had driven out after the club closed to, to find me. But you see, you didn't die that night. But neither did he. Could have been your imagination, you know, this man in the car. No, no, no. The news about this day of execution was on the radio. The man in the car must have heard it and gone away. Did you call the police? They didn't believe me. Just because I'm a nightclub singer, they said I was trying to get publicity. How about the car not starting and the telephone being dead? According to them, my car was just out of gas and I must have pulled the telephone wires off the wall myself. In the panic you were in, you could have. But I didn't. I tell you, I didn't. All right, all right. Anyway, it's tonight that we're concerned with. I don't know what to do. I... I just don't know what to do. Well, if it's true, this fear you have, you've got to find it out tonight. If you don't, it'll haunt you the rest of your life. Oh, I know, I know, but how? You've got to go back to your room. Oh, no, I'm afraid. I'll be with you. Still got your gun, remember? By the way, what were you going to do with that? I... I didn't have the nerve to use it, even on myself. Well, if anything is going to happen, it'll happen tonight. Not tomorrow or any time after that, but tonight. We'll go back to your place now and wait until it's daylight. I drove Fran back to the rooming house on Erie Street. There were no lights on anywhere in the building. We tiptoed down the empty corridor to Fran's room, listened at the door a minute, and went in. The door closed all right, but it wouldn't lock. I must have sprung it when I forced the door. We settled down and waited. For what? Once I thought I heard steps on the sidewalk far out front. It was that still. And then I did hear steps, slowly coming down the hall. Here's someone... in the hall. Keep it down. Oh, 
<laughs> go ahead, kid. Go ahead. You got it coming. I, I'm sorry. I'm all right. Oh. Nothing to be sorry about. I was kind of scared myself. It's a funny thing about fear. It's catching. Look out the window. I... It's almost light. And this all night has gone for good. You see? It was all in your mind. Things you were frightened of. It was nothing, really. You won't be afraid if I go now. No. I've caused you an awful lot of trouble. Oh, now you cut the hell or you'll get me going. And the kids at the club, I, I guess I should go back there and let them know I'm all right. What the doctor ordered for you is a little shut eye. I'll stop by on my way and give them a word. Good night. Good night. Oh, here's your gun. You might want to pawn it for a couple of pair of nylons. Yes, a real nice tomato-type tomato, as the funny man at the club would say. On the way over, I got thinking about him and that girl, Peggy. Come to think of it, that was one point Fran had forgotten to clear up for me about the note that sent her out to Peggy's cabin at the dunes that night. Yeah, my mind wouldn't let go of that. When I got to the club, it was daylight, and they were folding up the joint, and Peggy was sitting alone at the bar. Well, you got a nerve coming back here after... How's your boyfriend? He's not my boyfriend. It's a figure of speech. Where is he? He just left. Okay, I'll settle for you. If you don't mind, it's a little late for small talk, mister. Okay, I'll give it to you fast. It's about that note you wrote to Fran Fowler last November on the night Charlie Dana was supposed to die. What note? <laughs> a little late for small talk, remember? I don't know what you're talking about. You don't know anything about a note inviting Fran to stay out at your place at the dunes? I told her. I didn't know who wrote it. Were you telling the truth? Yes. Yes, I was. Okay, okay. Maybe you were. But you found out later who wrote it, didn't you? No, I... Now, tell me the truth. Or would you rather tell the police? All right. I did find out, but it wasn't like you think. Well, who was it? Tommy. Tommy Mason. Tommy Mason? The yes. funny man? His idea of a joke, no doubt. A hilarious joke that might have scared a poor kid to death. No, no, you're wrong. It wasn't a joke. Well, then why? Why did he do it? Because he's in love with her. He made me swear I wouldn't tell her. He, he wanted to wait until the time when she needed him, and, and then he'd tell her himself. Until she needed him? That's... How was he going to make her need him? Use a condemned murderer's empty threat to frighten her out of her sanity so she'd need him? Is he crazy? He is where Fran's concerned. Where is he? I don't know. He, he's been like a maniac all night since you left here. After every show, he's gone over to Fran's place looking for her. He's crazy jealous. Jealous? Of whom? Of you. He thought she was with you. But what if she were? This was the night. This was the night he was sure she would need him, and... Instead, she turned to you. Don't you see? Yes, I do now. Thanks. It was only about a half mile to France, but it seemed more like 20 miles until I turned off Clark up Erie Street and slammed into the curb. There was no one on the street. I was hoping he'd walk and I'd pass him on the way, but there was no one. I ran down the narrow hall, not daring to think what I'd find, and I flung open the door. Are you alone? Are you... Frightened. Are you alone? Well, yes, I've been sitting here since you left. I'm too tired to undress. Come on, let's get out of here. Grab your coat. But never where? mind, never mind, never mind. I'll tell you on the way. I shoved Fran out the door and we started cautiously back down the hall. We got about halfway when I grabbed her arm. The front door was opening slowly and a man made a dark silhouette against the gray light of the dawn. It was the funny man. The man with the slick, shiny hair and a permanent smile and the fast jokes. Only the smile was gone and he had a gun in his hand. Keep coming. Keep coming. We started towards him slowly. Tommy. Tommy, it was you. You who were going to kill me. You didn't know. You didn't know that I had a heart too, just like Charlie Dana did. Tommy, you never told me. You never let me. You didn't need me. You would have laughed at me like you laughed at my jokes. It, it couldn't have been you at the dunes that night. I followed you out there. And then drove back to the club. No, Tommy, no. You were lonesome, but you didn't need me. You needed Charlie Dana. I thought if you were afraid, you'd need me. And then you were afraid, but still you didn't need me. But I'd make you need me. I'd make you. Step by step, we moved closer. 
keep coming. I could see his face twisted with jealousy and hate, his eyes wild, as though a spark might make him explode. And tonight, when you were afraid and should have needed me, you didn't. You turned to him. Tommy, please. But now you need me. Now that I have my finger on this trigger, you need me more than you've ever needed anyone in your life. You need me. You need me, Fanny. You need me. Say it. Say you need me. I, I can't shoot. I can't shoot. He started to shake, and I ran forward to grab his gun. Look out! Drop it! Drop it! It's all right. I've got the gun. I can't. Is he hurt? Not to what he will be. Get up, funny man. No. Don't be too hard on him. He didn't realize. No, no, I... I guess maybe he didn't. It's funny, isn't it? You never really know what's going on in some of the best combed heads. <laughs> Well, that's the way it goes. A little later than usual this morning. The day shift has already moved in and let the night crew wander off to their own private little beds. Well, at least I got to see the sun come up. And here I sit, still trying to make it all add up. But no matter how I figure it, the only answer I get is... You never know about people. <laughs> but bless them, maybe that's why we love them. See that man walking towards you with a smile on his face? What's he smiling about? Or is it just so you won't notice how he's screaming inside? <laughs> Ooh, the trouble with me is I haven't had my coffee yet. Coffee, boy. Night Beat, a dramatic series stars Frank Lovejoy as Randy Stone... Night Beat is edited by Larry Marcus and directed by Warren Lewis. Music by Frank Worth. The part of Fran was played by Joan Banks. Paul Dubov played Tommy. Others in the cast were Georgia Ellis, Ken Christie, and Carol Richards. Frank Lovejoy will next be seen in Milton Sperling's production, Rock Bottom, released by Warner Brothers. Throughout the week, NBC brings you the best adventure mystery dramas on the air. You'll hear action-packed, fast-moving plots to hold your interest right up to the smashing climax on such thrilling programs as Big Town, Mr. District Attorney, The Big Story, and Dragnet, every week on most of these NBC stations. On Dragnet, you'll hear documented cases from the Los Angeles police files. The Big Story brings you true tales from the front pages of America's newspapers. Mr. District Attorney, the champion of the people, takes you through an exciting episode in the conviction of a criminal. And tomorrow night on Big Town, you'll hear crusading editor Steve Wilson crack down on the forces of evil. For the best high-tension dramas, hear NBC's great mystery and adventure programs. Listen next week at this same time and every week as Randy Stone searches through the city for the strange stories waiting for him in the darkness. The stories that come out of the shadows to find their way into Night Beat. Now, stay tuned for Brian Donlevy as a soldier of fortune on Dangerous Assignments on NBC. NBC.